to the house of the Lord. Amen. amen. Let us say amen. amen. Let us say amen. Let us say amen once again. We thank God for this day. We thank God for this time. We thank God for this privilege. And he's brought us into a brand new month. We need to give him the glory, honor, and the praise as we prepare to go on the service this morning. in 
grow my heavenly father and save my heavenly father. Give us my heavenly father the word that the pastor is going to give us today. Let it come into our heart. Let it be my heavenly father that we hear my prayer. Lord, I know that you, my heavenly father, can make a decree of all things. Yes. Everything my heavenly father belongs to you. Yes. Even my heavenly father, the thought that we have, my heavenly father. We ask my heavenly father that you forgive us of any evil of our mind. Yes. Forgive us for our sins, my heavenly father. Dear yes, Lord, I ask that you would please, my heavenly father, just bless the church of the church everywhere. Please just give us my heavenly father what we need. I ask that you would please my heavenly father just walk with us, talk to us, my heavenly father, as we go along the way. Yes, Lord. Lord, if you are my heavenly father that could be saved, but you know everything about us. You know our needs, you know our wants. Thank you for your darling son Jesus that you gave that we might have the right to be filled with you. Thank you. We want to thank you, my heavenly father, for all that you do, all that you have done. All that you are going to do in our lives. Dear Lord, with these things, give me my praise. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. something wonderful is occurring or something wonderful is about to occur. Uh, the people in the grandstand stand up and shout in preparation of whatever is about to happen on that day. And I know it's football season, so I know we have some people here who know exactly what I'm talking about. When the team is about to score, everybody stands up. Nobody is sitting down. And I'm thinking about something because I heard the voice of somebody that reminded me of something this morning. Remember, we're sitting at a game at Southern, and I had my mother with us. 
She had never really went to a football game, but she had, we had taken her to a couple of them. And she had gotten into the rhythm of what was going on at the time. In the beginning, she would say, why are all the people standing up? And I said, well, my dear, they're about to score so the people are standing up so they can see and be prepared for what's about to happen. And so for a while, we had to tell her it's okay to stand up because she would sit down. And then all of a sudden, after she had gone to a couple of games, she would stand up and stand up with everybody else because she knew was about to happen. Yeah. And it just happened to be that one of our vice principals from the school was in the same seating area that we were. Right. And he was sitting down, but he wouldn't stand up. And my mama looked over me and said this, why ain't he standing up? Don't he know they about to score a touchdown? Well, I'm here today to say this, why are you sitting down? Because God is in his house this morning. Somebody ought to be standing up on their feet because God is going to come in this church this morning. He's already arrived and it's time for us to give God some praise, give God some glory because God is doing a mighty, wonderful thing. At this time, let's prepare for our mission all.
blessing to be in the house of the Lord and among Christian brothers and sisters. It is at this time that if we have any first time visitors, returning visitors, or maybe you're searching for a church home, we acknowledge you at this time. And if you would stand and give us your name and church home, Seems as if we are all brothers and sisters of the Star Bethlehem family. May God bless all of us. Amen, amen, amen. amen. At this time, let us prepare to receive our tithes and our offerings. Thank you. 
Salvo que me desalvo. As your praise of that said, we exalt thee. We glorify thee. We honor thee. We recognize thee as God. And Lord, as we come this morning once again, we come once again stretching our hands to thee. We come seeking your face. We come seeking your presence. And Lord, you are the only one that we can come to. But we know you are everything that you are all. And Lord, as we are gathered in the house this morning, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for those who have allowed to come down to enjoy this day with us. To share this worship with us. Father, continue to bless your people. Touch your people. Feel your people. Let us, Father God, understand and recognize, Lord God, that you are in the midst. That you abide in the midst of the praises of your people. And Lord, as we come on this day, we give you all that we have. And so, Father, here I am giving myself unto you. Placing myself into the hands of the Holy Ghost to do thy holy work and do thy will. And so, Father, use me as your vessel. Use me as your vehicle. Take every part of me, every part of me, for all belongs to you. And so, Father, as I come and I stand in your presence, Hide me, my heavenly Father, and let your glory be seen. And so, Father, I say unto thee once again, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. First, give an honor to God, who is our Father, to Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our Redeemer, to the Holy Spirit, who is our Comfort, to our Teacher and our Guide, to our ministers of the Gospel, our evangelists, our ministries, our members, and each and every person who has gathered on this day. This is a wonderful day. It's wonderful because God has made it this day. It's a wonderful day because He's given us another opportunity to come into His presence and to share being in his presence. It's a wonderful day because he's allowed us to be able to hear and he's allowed me to hear the voices of many of those saints who so often come and give God the glory and remind us that in the midst of it all, they are abiding in holy presence with him. And on this day, they too are giving God the glory. Amen. Amen. Once again, we thank God for his confirmation. Everything from the devotion to the prayer to the praise, everything aligns with what God has to share with us this day. And so we want you to turn with us to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy. Chapter 8. And we'll be focusing our reading on verses 18 and 19. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And verses 18. And 19. And when you have it, said to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verses 18 and 19 reads as follows. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant 
which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. Amen. 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 May be seated in the presence of the Lord. But today, uh, this is what we're going to share briefly with you today is this. Remember never to forget the Lord. Remember never to forget the Lord. Now, children, sadly, we live in a time when many people have acquired a severe case of selective amnesia, especially when it comes to Almighty God. There are many people today who have the attitude and the mindset and traits that many of the children of Israel had during the days of Moses. They struggle to remember and seem to have forgotten that it was God who healed down and breathed life into their knowledge. It was God who heard and answered their prayers. It was God who lifted them up when they were down, fed them when they were hungry, gave them water when they were thirsty, clothed them when they were naked, helped them find their way when they were lost, healed them when they were ill or injured, and gave them shelter from the storm. It was God who gave his only begotten son Jesus to be their Christ and Redeemer, and he gave the Holy Spirit to be their consolation and their reminder. Now there's a question that every living and breathing human being must consider when it comes to the tendency <clears throat> to forget God. That question is, what if God forgot? What if God forgot to make the sun rise? What if God forgot to give us air to breathe? What if God forgot to wake us up this morning? Most of all, what if God were to forget about his promises to redeem us and to save us and to love us and to lead us and to preserve us and to protect us and to provide for us? What if God forgot? Wouldn't we be able to make it? Could we make it? David had a clear understanding of that principle. He understand strictly what it meant if God had forgotten. He said, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Now the book of Jeremiah indicates that God knows very well that we have a tendency to forget him. Well, in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 32, it reads like this. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. We can't fool God. God is not food. We can't live our lives the way we live them and then tell God, oh, Lord, 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 no, Lord. We ain't forgot about you. you we, we keep you on our mind all the time. And Lord, Lord, every second, every minute, every hour, you on my mind. Oh, you, you just on my mind, Lord. I never forget about you. Well, God said, well, wait a minute now. Don't lie to me now. You know that's a sin. You say you never forget about me, but I notice you keep your phone in your hand all the time. You're looking at what they're saying on Facebook. You're looking at what Newsmax is saying. You're looking at what your friends are saying. You're looking at the gossip of everything that's going on on Twitter and X and everything. Yet you say you never forget about me. What if I decided to take all that technology away, that phone that you use, that those clothes that you wear, that car that you drive, that house that you live in? What if? I decided to forget to allow the earth to continue to spin in the way that it spins, allow the oceans to stop at the place where I tell them to stop, allow the sun to keep shining at the temperature that it signs, allow the day and the night to recognize and know when they should change, when they should come. What if? I forgot that I told you I never leave you and forsake you. What if? I told you I'm a God that is jealous. What if? I didn't do what I said I was going to do. However, we should be glad that God gave a response to address the matter. Even though many people have forgotten about God and his grace and his mercy, 
Isaiah lets us know that God will never forget us. Isaiah 49 and 15 provide proof of God's commitment to us with these words. Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, they may forget, yet I will never forget you. God said, regardless of what's going on in this world, regardless of how crazy things are, regardless of how foolish people are, regardless of what 45 says, regardless of what his folks say, regardless of what goes on, and you wonder sometimes if God has forgotten. But God says, know this, I have never forgotten and I will not forget my children. Finally, it's essential that we understand and always remember that there exists a benefit to remembering God and a consequence to forgetting God. Simply put, it pays to remember and it costs to forget. We'll say this again. It pays to remember and it costs to forget. We find evidence to support this statement in our subject text. The reward and reason for remembering the Lord is presented in Deuteronomy 8 and 18. The reward is presented in the eighth clause where it says this, but you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who has given you power to make wealth. Boy, 45 and some of his folks be real upset at this right now. Because I guarantee you, every last one of them, whether it's a Russian oligarch, Chinese oligarch, American oligarch, whoever they may be, big time billionaires on the fourth richest people's list, richest person's list, all of them will have a problem with this because they'll tell you this, I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. All this wealth I got, I got it on my own. Didn't nobody help me get it. Didn't nobody give it to me. Everything I got, I got it because I did it on my own. To understand this, when we talk about, he said he's given power to make wealth. In this context, this is what his God is saying. It means this, that God is providing the means and the resources the army, the company, the virtue, the valor, the strength, and ability for his children to have the goods, the might, the power, the riches, the strength, the substance, the training, and the abilities that they have. Here it is. This is what a proud parent may say. All of them smart that girl, that child got, they got them from me. Or they got them from my side of the family. We know we say it. They my baby like that because my baby took after me. My baby got smart. My baby just like me. My baby took, and God going, watch yourself. Because I'm the one who gave you that child. I'm the one who created that child. Everything that is in that child, I put in that child. And why do you know everything that's in that child, I put in that child? Because in the beginning, I created everything. Everything was in Adam, so everything was already in Adam. The woman was in Adam. The nations were in Adam. The cultures were in Adam. The races were in Adam. Everything that was needed to be in man, I placed in him already. Then, we have to understand the reason is revealed in Clause B, where it says this, that he, and he is God, may confirm his covenant, which he swore and solemnly promised, to your fathers as it is this day. This is why I come to understand this. Everything that I am, everything that I intend to be, every step that I've made, every accomplishment that I've gotten is because of my father. I'm not talking about Matthew Young. I'm not talking about my grandfather Lee. I'm not talking about my grandfather on my mother's side. I'm not talking about any of those parental stages or trees in the in links in the tree. Everything that I am, everything that I am right now, and I intend to be, is because God made me who I am. 
for me to neglect to accept the fact that God is the reason I'm where I am, that I do what I do, that I'm able to accomplish what I'm accomplishing, the reason that I breathe, move in it, I would be a fool not to recognize and remember that God is the reason for all of us. Recognize this thing. You have to understand that God made a promise to our fathers. That means they prayed that we be kept. They prayed that we be sustained. They prayed that we be supplied. They prayed that we be protected. They prayed for us. Everything, the reason why we have been saved in such a way we go, ooh, that was close. No, nah, that wasn't close. That was God. And somebody prayed that God would be there for us and the same people who prayed for us down here are up there. And because they're up there, God is able to remember every request, everything that they asked for, every time that they asked, every time that they sought, every time that they knocked, and God remembers us because of it. Think about this. For these reasons, God does what he does so that we can recall and be reassured that the agreement, that the promises, that the vow that he made, that he established, that he confirmed, that he says shall continue, that he says shall endure, and that he says will be performed and accomplished, is the reason why he does what he does. God said his word shall not return void. Whatever he has said shall be accomplished. But understand, there's repercussions. There are costs to forgetting God. The repercussions and the cost of forgetting the Lord is spelled out in Deuteronomy 8 and verse 19. There it declares these words, and it shall come about if you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you today that you will surely and most certainly perish. What is God saying? What is the word saying? Perish in this context means this. You will vanish. You will go astray. You will be destroyed. You will be exterminated. You will be given up as lost. You will be blotted out. You will be done away with. You will be utterly broken. You will have no way to flee. You will be put to death, and you will experience divine judgment. So all of these were following the man. All of these were praising the man. All of these were following whatever that coach's mind said. All of those who's going to basing everything on their money, on their houses, on their cars, what they've got, what they've accumulated. God says that means you have forgotten him. He told Moses, tell the people, when they get their houses that they didn't have to work for, fruit trees and everything they didn't have to plant, feeding the food that they didn't have to do anything to eat. Tell them, do not forget about me. So every time we see the leaf blowing the tree, we should remember God. Every time we pick up the spoon to eat something, every time we get a snack from a vending machine, every time we take a sip of water, we ought to remember God. Because God made it all. And the wonderful thing is this. After God made it, God said this. I'm giving it to you. Y'all hear that? He didn't say you got to pay me for it. He didn't say you got to put a quarter. He didn't say you got to pay for water. He didn't say you got to pay for it. He said, I'm giving it to you. So as we leave you today, we must strive to never forget and remember never to forget the kindness and generosity that God has shown to us and the sacrifices that Jesus Christ has made for us. John provides a specific reminder of why we should never forget God and Jesus Christ. John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 offers these precious words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Then he says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So family, children, starlights, children of God, disciples of Christ, students of the Holy Ghost, remember never to forget the Lord. Why? Because in this passage, it displays the love and compassion by God in Jesus Christ, and it serves as the ultimate reason that we should remember never to forget the Lord. We must remember and never forget that God sent Jesus, and Jesus gave himself to be arrested for our crimes, to be judged for our guilt, to be whipped and ridiculed for our disobedience. God sent and Jesus gave himself to be convicted and castigated and crucified and confined to a grave for three days for our sins. God sent and Jesus gave himself to ascend back to glory, to prepare a place for us as an eternal resting place and to be our intercessor. God sent and Jesus gave himself to return, to claim all of those who never forget the law. This is the wonderful thing, children. They that wait on the law shall renew their strength. They shall mount up the wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary, walk and not faint. Remember and never forget that because God has said that's your heritage. Remember never to forget. And we said it already this morning. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Because years ago, many of us could say we'd be dead and gone. We wouldn't be able to walk how we walk, talk how we talk, live how we live. But we must never, ever forget the Lord. Never forget the Lord. How can I forget the one who's done so much for me? How can I forget the one who made so many ways for me? How can I forget the one who every day walks with me and talks with me and guides me along the way? How can I forget the one that when I find myself worried, he tells me, don't worry, I got you. How can I forget the one that lets me know he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother? How can I forget the one that tells me when my mother and my father have left and gone, he'll be right here for me. How can I forget that person? Never forget. Never forget. Always remember never to forget the Lord. And whatever you do, if anybody asks you why you're able to accomplish what you've done, because the Lord did it for me. How is it that you can make it when it seems like nobody else can make it? It's because the Lord keeps making a way. How is it that you can have a smile on your face when it seems like you should be grieving and mourning? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Always remember, always remember, never to forget the law. Because this is the thing, God never forgets his children. You hear this? God never forgets his children. Job thought he had forgot about them. He said he didn't forgot about them. But then at a certain time, the Holy Spirit reminded him who God is to him. He said, I know my Redeemer lives. The Lord give it, the Lord take it away. Bless be the name of the Lord. When David found himself in trouble, he said, Lord, have mercy on me. When David understood who God was and never could forget it, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is going to hide me in his tabernacle in a time of trouble. Yeah. The Lord is going to lead me in his green pastures. 
The Lord is going to allow my cup to run over. The Lord is my buckler. He's my shield. He's my help. He is my own. Moses had to ask God. People may have forgotten who you are, Lord. I'm going back to tell them who you are, but when they ask me who you are, they may have forgotten. What should I tell them that they never forget that you haven't forgotten? He said, when you go to Egypt, tell Pharaoh, tell my people that I am that I am. I am that I am. And when Jesus came, let me tell you who I am. I am your door. I am your good shepherd. I am your way. I am the truth. I am the light. I am the living water. I am the one that God sent down from heaven. I am the living manna. I am all that God said I am. Yeah. I'm your redeemer. I'm your savior. I'm your help. I'm your hope. I'm your faith. I'm your favor. I'm your fulfillment. I'm everything. I'm everybody. Right. It's hard to forget when you have somebody like that. It's hard to forget. When you have somebody who never forgets you, who never forgets you. Yeah. And you know why we know he never forgets? Because when he talked to Moses, he said, I've heard the prayers of my people. And I told the people, whenever they remember to call upon my name, whenever they would ask of me whenever they would seek me, whenever they would come and knock on the door. I promised them that I would hear their prayer. Yeah. I promised them that I would come to them. I promised I would not leave them comfortless. I promised I would always be right there. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, Lord, I'll be with you. Even until the end of the age. Yeah. And you know how he notarized it? He notarized it by saying, Amen. How many in here today can't forget it? How many in here today remember who he is? How many in here today remember when he saved you, how he helped you, how he healed you, how he delivered you, how he brought you from a mighty long way? Well, if you know something, we got your son. If somebody ought to know something, God is scoring for you again. You ought to be getting on your feet, giving God some glory, giving God some praise, because he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. But he did. And the wonderful thing about it is this. I heard my mom in the choir stand. Because these are the words she would say. Whenever she would get happy, and she remember how good God was to her, she would say these words. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Then I had another auntie. Whenever she got happy, she would say, I'm running, Lord, I'm running. I can't tell you. Then I had another auntie who would say these words. I'm running on to see what the end's going to be. Yeah. All those saints are in this house this morning. All those voices are in this house this morning. And somebody has somebody who made a difference in their life that reminds them of everything that God has done. And God always brings it back to your memory to let you know that he's never forgotten. Yeah. Mama's there. Grandmother's there. Daddy's there. He will send that voice to you to let you know. I ain't forgotten about you. I know about you. Yeah. Just don't forget about me. Yeah. In all that you do, in all that you carry out, just don't forget about the Lord. Amen. 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 Give God the glory. The doors of the church are open. You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come by a Christian experience. You can come and rededicate your life to Christ. If you're looking for a church home, this is your time. If you're looking for prayer, this is your time. God has made it possible. He said, if you don't forget me, I won't forget you. When you remember me, I will remember you. 
Because God is that kind of God. In the midst of it all, he never forgets. He said, if my people are called by my name, should humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear their sin, hear their prayer, forgive their sin, and heal the land. Thrill in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. This is your time. This is your opportunity. God has given you this time, this opportunity to come forward. He's opened the doors to make you available to Him and Him available to you. Is there one today? Is there another today? Make me whole. He is love for me. Sometimes you may have done some things that may not be pleasing. But you do know what this thing they do. They may say something, they open the door. They say, come on in the house. We'll talk about it later. We'll deal with it later. And in dealing with it, they always will say yes. Regardless, that situation may have been. It may not have been pleasing. But always know this. I always will. I always will. And this thing always does. Most important thing I always remember is this. God says, I love my children. Who can separate us from the love of Jesus? What can separate us from the love of Jesus? Height, depth, the angels, principalities. None of those things can separate us from him. And as long as we lean on him, God has no problem with us. He has no problem with us. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come at this hour and thank you, God, for your grace and mercy. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for who you are. And Father God, thank you for touching the heart of your son. And thank you for reminding him and allowing him to remember that you are his help, that you are his friend, that you are his father, that you are his friend. We thank you, Lord God, for letting him remember that he can always run to you and that you are God and always standing there ready to grasp him and lift him up in your arms. And continue, Father God, to allow him to remember who you are. Remember that you are always there for him. And Father God, just continue, Father God, to whisper in his ear. When he seems to be going off track, Father God, we know that you're able to redirect. Because David sent your rod and his staff, they comfort him. And so, Father, thank you for guiding him back to the right path. 
mold him and keep him and guide him, Father. He is God in the vice. He is the vice, Father God. Let the Holy Spirit be his GPS. Give him direction for which way after the truth. And Father God, we pray with him, pray for him. We wrap our loving arms around him and the family of Jesus Christ. Because that is what you told us to do. And so, Father God, we thank you. We praise you. And we glorify you. For this wondrous work on this earth. And we know, my Father God, that the angels in heaven rejoice. Because the angels in heaven rejoice, we too rejoice. In the fact, Father God, that your son, your father, your son is coming. And so, Father God, we welcome him. We welcome him. We welcome him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Give God a hand of praise. example, that's a demonstration that when we remember him, God remembers us. Amen. Do we have any announcements? Uh, yes, we do. Good morning, everyone. First, we want to invite everyone to come celebrate an evening of praise and worship with the Gospel Truth in their 46th Gospel Explosion. This will be held October 19, 2024. Doors will open at 5, program starts at 6. Some of the groups that will be featured will be the legendary Lighthouse Singers, the GSJ Men, Terrell Griffin and the Vocalaires, the Baton Rouge Male Choir, the Sensational Soul Searchers, the Liberate Singers, Miss Audrey Ferguson, and the Voices of Distinction. Again, that's going to be here on October 19th, starting at 6 p.m. Uh, tickets are $10 in advance, $12 at the door. You can see from the Leroy Combs for more details. Also, Sister Mary Johnson would like to speak with all youth immediately after service. They're going to meet on the south side of the church in front of this podium over here. Again, all youth immediately after service this morning need to meet with Sister Mary Johnson. The youth choir will be having choir rehearsal on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Lastly, but certainly not least, we will be celebrating our church anniversary on the fourth Sunday in October. Again, the fourth Sunday in October, we will be celebrating our church anniversary. We want you to have that on your mind, praying in your spirit as we celebrate all the years that God has blessed this ministry. Also, at the end of next month, we will be having our Fall Fest we are accepting both monetary and candy donations. You can see Sister Sandra Chancel or myself to contribute either money or individually packaged candy can be uh, donated. We invite you to partake of breakfast with us this morning. Have a wonderfully blessed week knowing that God remembers. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for all that he is allowing us to be a part of and experience. And once again, we thank God. And God continue to bless uh, Brother Combs and the gospel truth, amen, uh, for serving in the manner that he's been serving in all these years. And that's evidence that God never forgets his children. We always remember to serve and worship him, amen. He blesses him in a mighty way. And we look forward to everything that's going to be going on and upcoming, amen. And, uh, we have a couple other things we want to share with you. Um, of course, we thank God for uh, last Sunday, family and friends day we had, and uh, some of the fields gave us some inspirational words, amen. amen. And we thank God for it, and we thank God for all of our captains, all of the ones who worked in the ministries, everybody who provided and, and pledged and bowed and did what they did. Most of all, that God made it a success, amen? amen, and that we're able to experience that day. And uh, even that Sunday, uh, you didn't get to read it, but he left a resolution for the church. 
He had a resolution in his hands for the church, amen. And I just want to share that with you all today, what he said. He says, a resolution to commend the Star Bethlehem Baptist Church upon the occasion of his family and friends they served. Whereas on August 25th, 2024, the Star Bethlehem Baptist Church will host his family and three-day service. And whereas a fitting theme has been chosen for the occasion, family and friends fellowshipping as kindred of God's kingdom. And whereas the Star Bethlehem Baptist Church currently thrives under the inspirational leadership of Pastor Lenny and Young. And whereas the family and friends day service will be a great time of prayer, joyous jubilation, heartfelt reunion and spiritual renewal shared between the current members and those from the wider community. And whereas this service held at the Star Bethlehem Baptist Church will illuminate how fellowship with both God and with one another unifies, heals, and encourages. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the members and leaders of the Star Bethlehem Baptist Church, a host of the service focused to strengthen and to stir up the faith of all. Therefore, be it resolved that the Star Bethlehem Baptist Church is hereby commended and congratulated on the occasion of his family and friends they serve. Send to the Cleo Fields, District 14. Amen. And so it's what he shared for the church for us to have. Amen. We just wanted everyone to, to have it and to hear it. And we thank God for it. Amen. 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 And just to let you know, we talk about everything that's going on in October. There will be some things uh, forthcoming in the month of September. And this uh, special event is going to be for the women. Amen. It's for the women. Amen. And so what we're going to be talking about is going to be the women overcoming and obtaining it workshop. This will be the wild workshop. Amen. And this is planned for Saturday, September the 28th from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And these are some of the sessions that are going to be offered. Overcoming worldly fears and operating in worldly faith, recognizing and overcoming domestic violence, recognizing and overcoming addiction, overcoming budgetary and financial obstacles. Amen. And so all of this being done is part of our church community, community church ministry that we have that we've set forth and being done in the cooperation with the ministries of this church. Amen. And so God has already said he has those people here to do his works. And those people that have been talented, given the gifts to be able to do, shall be participating in it. And we invite all the women. Now, men, don't try to don't try to sneak into this now. This is for the women, amen. To share and to get knowledge and information that God has for them. Amen. And it's not just for the church. It's gonna be shared for all the people in the community. Amen. The southern, wherever, all, all the young ladies, and we get in touch, we're going to give you some flowers to hand out. It's for them, amen, because we need this right now. We need this right now. And so everybody needs to know who they are, not to be wrapped up in fear, but to grow up and strengthen in their faith, amen, that God has given, amen. And so we're going to share more information on that uh, as well. And uh, just thanking God for all that he's doing and for all he's going to do. And I think we have a fifth Sunday this month, don't we? And so, this is something that the Lord keeps pressing in my spirit. And I keep looking at everyone here and I keep seeing how God has been so good to us. This house is filled with living testimonies. Filled with living testimonies. And so that Sunday is going to be our living testimony service. All that have been saved and restored, where the borough said they should have been dead and gone, where the enemy tried to take them out, we gonna praise and celebrate the Lord on that day. And we also gonna pray for each and every one of you. All of you have been a living testimony who God has saved, who God has brought, that the people said you would not be here, and if you be long gone, we gonna praise, we gonna pray for you, and we gonna celebrate God. And if you decide to do so, like the old pastor used to say, if you wanna give up and give your testimony, it can't be no three hours now. We're going to let the, the church people, we're limited now. It can't be all day long. But if you have a desire to express that testimony of what God has done for you, amen, you'll have time to do it. It'll be like the old way now. Don't be scared. But don't, but don't be up there all day long. Amen. 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 So we just, God, just, God wants us to show and express how good he's been. And we need to just let everybody know we know he's been good. Amen. Amen, amen. So give God a hand of praise for everything that he's doing. All that he's doing. Amen. 
And if you don't have anything else, amen, let's stand for the closing prayer and the benediction. Heavenly Father, we come at this hour thanking you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for all that you continue to do. Thank you for never forgetting us, Lord. And thank you for placing it in our spirit to remember and never to forget you. And Father God, just be with these your children and your people. Keep them and guide them as only you can. Hold them as only you can. Teach them as only you can. Touch them as only you can. And so, Father, we thank you for each and every one. Continue to let your love and your favor, your grace abound upon them and in them. Let your light shine in them and from them, Father. Be with all the sick and shut in. Be with the poor and the need. Be with the bereaved as well. And Father God, just continue to let us have that joy unspeakable, that peace unspeakable that you give unto your children and your people. And continue to bless the star of Bethlehem Baptist Church. Use us, Father God, in your works and in your service and in your season to reach out to make a difference in someone's life. And Father, we always be mindful and always remember, never to forget you, and to give you the glory, to give you the honor and the praise for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and rule and abide with you now and forevermore. Let us all respond by saying, Amen. 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 Have a wonderful day in the Lord.